Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Okay, so um, I've been asked to talk about um, Nawab Kapoor Singh. Okay, um, just his 18th century uh, Sikh hero. Obviously, 18th century means he's in the 1700s. So I want to give the background context to um, Nawab Kapoor Singh because this is going to be helpful to all of us to understand like where he came from, uh, why was he important, the impact he had. Um, just very quickly, you can see Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, 1708. They're Jyoti Jyot, um, and they're no longer part of, you know, they're, they're sort of physically not there. Although the Khalsa Panth is there and the Guru Granth Sahib Ji is there, but Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj is, uh, is no longer there. That's from Nandir. But what they do before they leave is they give the hukum to Banda Singh Bahadur to go up to Sirhand and uh, effectively, uh, you know, deliver justice to those people like uh, Wazir Khan, who had been responsible for the, she for the Shahidi on the Chote Sahib Zadeh and Mata Guji Ji, and also to those people that had... Uh, that had been involved in killing the family of um, uh, Moti Ram Mehra, who had given milk to Chhota Sahib Zadeh, and also, I uh, always forget this person's name, but he's a very famous uh, Muslim whose family had fought on Sada Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Buddhusha, Peer Buddhusha. So Peer Buddhusha's family had, had, uh, um, had, you know, had been um, killed as well. So he, he had a mandate to do those three things, and go to Sirhand, and the Hukum Fahmari was to it Kharakado, yeah, to destroy Sirhand. So no two bricks are joined together. Yeah? Um, and he does that. Banda Singh Bahadur in 1710 conquers Sirhand. Khalsa Raj is declared. You know, there's a famous coin even struck by the Khalsa. This is the coin in the name of Guru Gunande Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. Um, and what happens is, is that the Mughal Emperor at that time, then Bahadur Shah, decides, right, you know, he didn't give justice to Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, took justice. Yeah, important for us to remember that. And then he decides, right, a jihad on the Sikhs. And so from this point on, then the Sikhs are basically buggy. Yeah, the Raj crumbles, um, and then following the Raj crumbling, then the Singhs go into hiding. And um, Zakaria Khan is the, is the governor of Lahore, likes to kill Sikhs, one of his favorite things. And basically, Sikhs are Bagi at that time. Now, the old saying goes that Sikhs are either Bagi or Badshah. They're either in charge or they're rebels. Yeah? So this time, the, long, the Raj is gone, so now they're Bagi. Um, in 1716, Vana Singh Bahadur then. Uh, he's captured in 1715 and he's Shaheed in 1716, along with 700 Sikhs. 100 Sikhs were killed every day. Okay? Uh, and this happens in Lahore. Um, and then uh, from 1716 to 1733, during this time, pretty much the Pant is living a, a grid of warfare lifestyle. They're outside. Um, this is probably one of the kind of, given that the, the Pant had kind of been quite stable and we had our Gurdwari, from now on we are all buggy. Yeah? Um, and this had not happened in, in our history. This sort of 16. Uh, 16, 17 year period, for the Sikhs was something totally new. That they had been totally, you know, no longer allowed to go to the Gurdwari, wherever they're seen, they're shot on sight. Um, and uh, what happens is that because it's, there's not really strong leadership at that time, you get, end up with uh, small missiles. Um, um, but, they are, but they become very effective at guerrilla warfare. And this is where the old idea of Dahi Fud comes from, that the Sikhs have one point for fighting and winning, one point for uh, fighting, losing, getting out alive and half a point for fighting and dying. Yeah? So this was the idea. And they became very effective guerrilla warfare guys. Um, and basically the leaders are left are Pai Mani Singh uh, and Jaitha Darbara Singh, who's in Hang Singh. And Pai Mani Singh ends up becoming the kind of leader, uh, not spiritual leader, but the kind of person that people turn to for things like Bani and teachings. And then um, Jaitha Darbara Singh is uh, more of a warrior. In 1733, Zakaria Khan, the, uh, the governor of Lahore, gets tired of the Sikhs being such effective guerrilla fighters because whatever they, what they do is they tend to steal uh, the Mughal armory. So whenever they're transporting money, they rob it. Yeah? Whenever they've got loads of horses going over there with a couple of guys transporting them, they rob those. Yeah? And because they're so effective and you can't find where they are because they're living in the forest, they're living out and about, you can't attack them specifically, they get fed up of this situation and Zakaria Khan says, let's have peace with these guys. Yeah? because he's got other troubles. So he uh, offers peace terms to the Sikhs and the peace terms um, are basically a jagir, which is land, but it comes with an income. At that time it's about a lakh, a lakh one lakh rupees a, uh, a year. So it's quite a lot back in those days. Yeah? Um, and they, he says, I'll give you a nawabi. Now a nawabi was a specific kind of uh, political title for somebody who was like a leader. Okay, so Nawab Kapoor Singh, you can see the name, 
the, the, the Sikhs needed to pick their own leader. Okay? Somebody who was going to get offered this Nawabi. Um, and at that time then, the Guru Khasa Pant chooses uh, Kapoor Singh of the Singh Puri Amisal to be the Nawab of the Pant. So he's chosen as a leader. Okay? So I'm going to go in the next slide into why was he chosen, what kind of person was he. Okay? But that's the context. So that, you know, you've seen so the 60, 70 years of the Pant being outside in, in the forest, not really having much security. Uh, and now suddenly this peace and the Vav Kapoor Singh is chosen as the leader of the whole Pant. So he's 1697 he's born, yeah? Um, so he's only, you know, sort of maybe about 11 years old when Guru Gobind Maharaj is, you know, Jyoti Jyot. So I don't think he gets to meet them that much. But he is from a very uh, religious family. His father is a Sikh. He's from the Virk clan, if any of you guys are from that clan. I don't say caste because it's not really caste, it's more of a clan. Um, and, uh, and he's 24. Uh, in 1721, he takes Amrit from the Panj Pyari, And the Panj Pyari happened to include Pai Mani Singh. Yeah? So he, he, he's close to Pai Mani Singh. Uh, and he ends up becoming living next to them, not living near them, but he ends up having a lot of their Sangat as well. Yeah? Um, from, se from, from that time when he takes Amrit to 1933, in that period of time, is where he starts to shine. So he's got 12, 13 years, uh, 12 years of being kind of like showing himself from 24 till you can see when he becomes a leader. He's, you know, about th uh, 36. In that time is when he starts to, he really comes out of, you know, into, as a Khalsa warrior. Um, he was given the mission to do the, some of the things the Kriya Khan was really fed up with, which is basically robbing the Mughal uh, treasuries, yeah? uh, the horses and weapons. Um, they're living in the forest, very hard to find the Sikhs. Uh, and one of the things he likes to do, he's not just like a guy who's like, you know, an outband, very hunkari or whatever. He likes to do a lot of seva of the Khalsa. He's got a lot of piyad for the Khalsa. And, you know, history notes that the two things he liked doing were seva of the horses. Okay, so when the horses come back, obviously at those times, you know, the Sings would commonly say that if your wife dies, a Singh wouldn't cry. But if the horse died, they would cry. Yeah? It was a Jan Pai. Now you might see that as bad, but that was a, it was a common saying because it was, the horse was seen as a brother, Jan Pai, a brother for life. Yeah? Um, and people lived off their horses. They literally slept with them, ate with them, everything was done. Even the, the nowadays we have Kale Chole. Yeah? You, know, you know, you had those. That's not a common food in India. Yeah? Punjabis eat that. That is actually horse food. Yeah? Kale Chole was what was given to horses, but the Sikhs used to end up eating the same thing like horses were eating. So that's where that comes from. You know? um, so uh, Jadha Darbara Singh, uh, he's basically a... Um, in 1733, he's close to Nava uh, Kapoor Singh, who's called Sadar Kapoor Singh at that time. Yeah? Um, and the Jadha Darbara Singh says, you know what, I'm not going to have this Nawabi. Yeah, he's offered it. He says no. Um, he chooses um, uh, Kapoor Singh as being the leader. Now, Kapoor Singh at that time happens to be in George Sahib Seva. Yeah, he just happens to be standing there. Um, and they give, it, they give it to him there. And then they do, you know, the Panji Piyari say, you know, we're going to give this, uh, this uh, Nawabi. Um, and he says, and you can't see the unfortunate names at the bottom. I don't know if you can on those. Um, but basically he says, I will accept, go back, I will accept the, the Nawabi of the Mughal government, but I'm not going to accept it directly to me. So I'm not going to get the Mughal government to give him the Nawabi. Because the Mughal government will give it to the Panji Piyari. And the Panj Piyari, the Panth, will give it to me. Yeah, he goes, I'm not, I'm not going to take anything from them. Just like, you know, we're saying Chopi Sahib, yeah? Jo bar chaun, so tum te I only get it from the Guru. So he, he chooses that. So this is his mentality. He's a servant of the Panth. And he puts a condition upon becoming the leader of the Panth. He goes, the condition is that I get to carry on doing the seva of the horses and in langar. Yeah? So he was a sevadar. Now you might say nowadays, now Panth, everybody wants to be a sardar. Not many people want to be a sevadar. But this is a sevadar mentality that he had. He wanted to serve the Panth and do something for the Panth. The Panj Pyari at this time are important to note, yeah? One of the Panj Pyari is Baba Deep Singh Ji. Okay, Baba Deep Singh Ji, secondary scribe uh, to uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji. When Guru Gobind was writing the Guru Granth Sahib Ji and the Sam Granth Sahib, um, the Bani, then at that time, Bhai Mani Singh and Baba Deep Singh Ji are the scribes, yeah? So famous people, right, are of our Panth, our history, are actually saying that they're the Panj Pyari, but, but Nawab Kapoor Singh was chosen. Yeah? Everybody knew this guy, they respected him. Uh, he's very beloved, and he's then chosen the leader. So he's not just any random person. Some people sometimes make a story that it was a guardian George Sahib Seva. Even I heard that they just picked him. This guy is well respected as a leader, a warrior, and also uh, somebody who wants to serve the Panth. Okay, um, uh, Baba Deep Singh Ji was one of them. Jasa Singh Ram Gadia, not Aluwalia, was one of the Panth Pyari. Also, the great grandfather of Ranjit Singh, the Raja Ranjit Singh, yeah, hundred years later, he's also one of the Panth Pyari at that time. 
Okay, so very eminent people. Okay, so what does he do in the time that he is now given the leadership of the Pant? Okay, um, first thing he does. Now remember the whole point of um, Zakaria Khan and the Mughal kingdom, ki- kingdom giving the Sikhs this Nawabi was a declaration of peace, right? So the idea was that Sikhs would then calm down, stop attacking the Mughals, right? Maybe go back to a more peaceful way of living rather than attacking the Mughal. But Nawal Kapoor Singh, he doesn't trust him, right? And he's all about sorting the Khalsa out. So what he does, he organizes the Khalsa Pant very quickly. He's a very efficient guy. And he ends up uh, setting up two, uh, he sets up the Dal Khalsa, which is a Khalsa army. Yeah? Dal Khalsa, everybody who is in Dal Khalsa has to be part of either one of two Dals. Yeah? Uh, and the whole Dal Khalsa reports to him, so he's basically the head of the whole thing, right? But there's two parts, the Buddha Dal and the Tarna Dal. Now if you look nowadays, Nihang Singh's, you know, so this is the, he was the head of all the Nihang Singh's, right? Buddha Dal uh, was everybody over 40 in the name, yeah? Buddha Ji. Uh, and um, Sham Singh Atariwala, he's one of the people, Gurbak Singh, not this, not um, Bhandar Singh Badar obviously, Bhag Singh, Gurdyal Singh, and also uh, the, the Singh Puriya Misso, that uh, actually Kapoor Singh himself led. Okay, they were all part of the Buddha Dal. And then, um, oh, sorry, the mission of the, of the Buddha Dal. The mission was to manage the Gurdwari, okay, do the Parchar, uh, and teaching Sikhi. Right? So very much, it was very successful in doing this. So they were like the Pracharics, you know, they used to manage everything, make sure Mariada was going along properly. Um, and the Tarna Dal, Tarna means young. Yeah? The Tarna Dal were the kind of warriors that were sent out to fight. They were like kind of, not fully formed enough to do kind of prachar, but good enough to go and fight and do all the missions. Okay, so they're like in training until they join the Buddha Dal when they're older. So the Buddha Dal is very successful at the prachar effort. Now you might say nowadays that where the Nihang Singhs, you know, they should be doing prachar, and they do when they tour around. But they were the main pracharaks of the Panth from the Khalsa angle, yeah. Um, and they are so successful that the Tarna Dal, which is the younger one under Sardar Racing, grows into Five missiles of 12,000 soldiers. Yeah? And these are, you know, this is a big, at that time most of the things were kind of more, inf- uh, not infantry, but more um, cavalry on horses. So you've got effectively 12,000 soldiers yeah, with horses. So it's quite a big army, really. And the problem is, is that this starts to um, affect Zakaria Khan. He's like, yo, this is not what I expected when I gave you guys in the that you actually form an army and get so organized. Because each one of these missiles, or uh, that Tanada, they get given a jaga in Amritsar. There's five uh, pools of water in Amritsar, Santok, Sar, Kol, Sar, um, uh, and, and various other stuff. I can't remember right now. But they're, they're, they're each given a little area that they can train in, and they're all getting very organized and very good at fighting. So they start getting worried about this. Uh, at the same time, just a little pointer, just to Singh Aluwalia, who becomes the next leader of the Panth after Nawab Kapoor Singh, is then given to Nawab Kapoor Singh yeah? to, as, a, as a kind of apprentice, train him up, you know, teach him everything you know. So, uh, what happens is, is that uh, Zakaria Khan says, you know what, it's only been a year and a half, by the way, since he gave peace terms. And all, suddenly all, all this organization happened. Singh moved very quickly at that time. Nowadays, probably in a year, we could probably get one or two meetings together. Yeah? Um, but they got together very quickly. They organized this stuff. It was all working. Jahidah Darbara Singh has now passed away. Okay, so obviously, he was only a year before his death. Lucky he didn't take the Nawabi, right? Zakaria Khan says, you know what, um, I'll let you guys have a massive Jord Mela for Vesakhi. Okay? Now, all the Singhs used to meet up for Vesakhi, they decided to do it at Amritsar. Bhai Mani Singh is the organizer because he's based at, um, at uh, Akal Tak Sahib and Harmandar Sahib, he's head Granthi. Um, and they're going to have a massive Jord Mela. And the idea excuse me, of the Jord Mela is that they're going to kill all the Sikhs. Zakaria Khan thinks, right, get them all in, they'll be celebrating, and then we'll just ambush them all and kill them all. Yeah? But by Mani Singh cancels Visakhi. He's like, I'm not going to get all my Sikhs getting killed. Right? But the Mughals had asked for a big payment of tax in order to, for them to have the Visakhi Jord Mela. And they said, like, pay up. It's your choice, choice to chance to you cancel it. It's your fault, but pay up. Pai Mani Singh refuses. Yeah? And for that is uh, when Pai Mani Singh Ji becomes Shaheed in 1734. And you know the story, Band Band Katai. Yeah? He was um, offered to convert to Islam, he refused. Then they were going to chop him from here to here to here. And Pai Mani Singh Ji says, don't start here. That's the first joint is there. So start there. You know? And so you, I put the picture up there. So Pai Mani Singh, by the way, you know, he's a Sikh from the time of Guru Harai Sahib Ji. Pai Mani Singh was there 
in uh, when Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, sorry, Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji was Jyoti Jyoti in Delhi. They'd carried the ashes back to Kiratpur Sahib. Bhai Mani Singh had been with Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. They'd stayed with Guru Gobind Singh Ji. They'd written up all the bhai that Guru Gobind Singh Ji has written. So this is a very sort of respected Panthic leader, yeah? Um, Bhai Mani Singh is then Shaheed in 1734. Jahidah Darbara Singh is Shaheed, has passed away. So now, effectively, Namah Kapoor Singh is, is the leader, but he's also like one of the most respected Sikhs of the time as well. Moving on. Basically, Namah Kapoor Singh finds himself now ahead, not of in peacetime, but in wartime again. He's still the head of the Pant, but the Pant is now Bagi again. Okay? Um, and uh, it's said at that time, it was a great honor to take Amrit, if Nawab Kapoor Singh was one of the Panj Pyari. So you can imagine like, you know, when Sanjay Nair Singh Ji was one of the Panj Pyari, how many people were like, I took Amrit from Taksal, my Panj Pyari was, was, was uh, Sanjay Nair Singh Ji. He was like, at that point, you know, he was not, he was just, you know, really well respected. Um, in, from 1734 to 1738, again, there's a price on the head of every Sikh, okay? But Nawab Kapoor Singh is still the leader, uh, in 1738, this is interesting for a lot of people, I'm going to speed up. There was two sets of Mughals. Yeah? A lot of people think there's only one set of Mughals. There was two sets. The, set, the second set was from Iran and Persia. And they used to attack the ones in India. The Indian ones were kind of the Indian Mughals. You know, they kind of settled in. They liked Keetan. Uh, they had like Tan Sen doing their music for them. They were kind of Indianized. Yeah? But the ones from uh, Iran and stuff, they just came in to loot. And they looted the Mughal India. So they robbed and sacked their cities of Delhi. So Nadir Shah... He basically uh, comes in and loots the Mughal Delhi, right? So what's happening is two sets of Mughals are fighting against each other, yeah? And in that time, the Sikhs are kind of left alone. So in this kind of, you know, space where they've got to breathe, they get very strong very quickly, yeah? And they actually are very delighted when Nadir Shah then goes back through Punjab, back towards Persia, because what do they do rest? They rob and they loot the Mughals, yeah? And also, they free all the women. Yeah, hundreds and thousands of women that were intended for slavery, the Singhs. This is the famous story you hear about, right? And this was all under Nawab Kapoor Singh. Okay? He was one that organized this to happen, that Sikhs would free all these women. Um, now, he was very endeared, the Pant then, to the local people. Because here, they were not only just, you know, they were actually freeing women. It's quite, a, quite obviously an important uh, point. Something that we're very proud of nowadays, we talk about the past. In 1740, um, the story of Masarangar, Okay, happens, you know, when he takes over Harmandir Sahib um, and turns it into like his own personal uh, harem and he's got his girls dancing there, he's drinking. Sukha Singh, Matab Singh are, are sent off to behead him. This is all again under the Nawabi of Nawab Kapoor Singh. Eh? So he's a leader, he would have been part of that whole decision making process to pick those two to go off to Harmandir Sahib. Yeah? And obviously you've heard the story, Sukha Singh, you know, walks up, he's like a one man killing army. They get in, they got Loya on top, they get right into where Penji showed the tree. Yeah? They put the baby right there, tie their horses up there. They go in, Masarangar is sitting there, they say, oh, we've got some money for you. And Matav Singh throws the money down, like this in a sack. And uh, Masarangar bends down to pick it up. And quick as a flash, Matav Singh's had his head off and tucked it into the bag. At the same time, in that couple of seconds, Sukha Singh's gone around the whole room and pretty much killed everybody. Just as a one man, he's so, he's so chardical as a, as a warrior. Um, and then they get back out, they destroy it, they kill everybody inside Harmandir Sahib, so there's no one to report what happened. Then they just leg, leg it back outside, get on their horses, and they ride out alive. Yeah? That's unheard of, the idea that someone could get into Harmandir Sahib, kill the leader, and then come back out with his head. But they do. Um, but at the same time, you've got then from 1740 to 1745, thousands of Sikhs being Shaheed. Yeah? Under Nawab Kapoor Singh's obviously stewardship, the problem is there's still a price in the head of every Sikh. It's very dangerous to be a Sikh. And yet, the Pant is growing. Don't think the Pant was reducing. No one wanted to join. The Pant is still growing because people at Nawal Kapoor Singh are so chardikala that people want to, when they meet what the Khalsa are doing, they want to join up. Okay? Um, I'm going to skip this bit. You know about Paitaru Singh. 1745, Paitaru Singh is Shaheed. Sakriya Khan dies the same day. You can find out more about that story, about the two of them, how that happened. Um, so, f finishing off to Nawal Kapoor Singh, kind of passing on. Um, in 1746 um, is when uh, Mughal forces and also a, another major Hindu guy, Lakhpat Rai, yeah? um, uh, they, their army fought the Sikhs and roughly 7,000 Sikhs are Shaheed. Yeah? And these are all our fighting soldiers. They're not the women and the children. In the Vardakalukara, 
it was more women and children that died, but not the fighting force. In Chote Khalugar, it was more our, our armed forces, yeah? Um, and uh, Nawab, this is 1746, um, and hundreds of people are beheaded in Lahore as well. Uh, in 1747, just a year later, Nawab Kapoor Singh is only 50 years old. He organized a Gurmata, uh, and in that Gurmata, he decides to organize a Panth into 25 missiles. Now, think then, back to when the Tarnadar was only five missiles. Yeah? The army is actually five times bigger. Yeah? The Panth is still growing, even through all the problems that are going on. Yeah? Um, and uh, basically, each Panth, each missile is given a little leadership, a leader, and it's got an area of responsibility. And in 1748, then Nawab Kapoor Singh then retires. Effectively, he says, I no longer should be head. Um, and they have a big Gurmata. And Sadar uh, Jasa Singh Aluwalia um, is given this title, Sultan e Qom. Sultan means king, Qom of the Sikh Panth. He's the head of the whole Panth. Yeah? He's the king of the Panth. Is that is that his, of the community. Um, now, just a quick one. Sadar Kapoor, uh, Kapoor Singh is only 51. And yet he's recognized it's time for me to retire. You might question our Gurdwara leadership nowadays. Have they worked out that part? Um, also, on Jasa Singh Aluwalia, he's born in 1718. Okay, his nickname is Guru Kalal, yeah, the, the the jewel of the Guru, yeah, the beloved of the Guru. He's so beloved, people love love this guy so much. Um, but he's only at that time 30 years old. Okay, when he becomes the head of the whole Pant. So our leadership didn't used to be so so old. They used to be quite young, then they used to move on and pass it on. Um, these next bits are just to give you the context because you've heard things happen afterwards, what happened in, just to get you an idea, what happened after Nawab Kapoor Singh had not, was no longer the head of the Panth. Um, from that time, when Jasa Singh Alwali comes in as the head of Sultan Egom, till 65, yeah, a full, what is that, I can't remember, mass, probably, 17 years later, yeah, Nadir Shah has now died, the Iranian Muslim, uh, Mughals, yeah, but his next one is Amr Shah Abdali, okay, and in that time, those 17 years, Amr Shah Abdali invades India nine times. Yeah, it's like you know. Have you ever seen that uh, uh, Vikings or something? They always invade every year. They go invade France every summertime. They, it was like that. Every every two years they were like, where are we going? Let's go India. Let's go over there, rob and pillage India, and come back. But every time he comes back on the way, he has to pass through Punjab, and they're just singing Alawali and all the things are waiting for them, right? To just get them on the way back. So in that time, okay, as they keep robbing Abdali and they keep rescuing the women. Um, then all the other Pange happened that you hear about, right? Because now we've got two sets of Mughals that we're fighting, the Indian ones, but the Afghans are, you know, and the Iranians are quite annoyed with us as well. And that's when you get things like, um, you know, 1757, um, Baba Deep Singh fights to free Harmandir Sahib. Uh, in 1762 then, the Vadda Kalukara, where actually about, uh, you know, 20 to 30,000 Sikhs are killed, okay? Uh, and they're mostly women and children. Uh, with a few kind of, they were, they were kind of the support, they were kept away from the battlefield, but then the Mughals came upon them and the soldiers weren't there. Um, and then basically, 65, Abdali gives up. He's getting quite old. He no longer wants to go to India and invade. It's getting too tough for him because the Sikhs are not making it easy. Um, and then the next bit is from 16, 1766 to 1799, then the Pant ends up establishing itself in Punjab. Okay? Um, but because there's no enemy that much anymore, what do we do best? Infighting. Yeah? You get a lot of infighting, the missiles are fighting amongst the other. Uh, Sadar Jasa Singh Aluwalia passes away in 83. Okay? Uh, and uh, there's a lot of infighting. It's not a very good period of time. Sikhs are fighting Sikhs for, for uh, power and control. But then in the end, in 1799, then Ranjit Singh kind of rises up as the great grandson of one of the Panjabiari from uh, Nawab Kapoor Singh's time. He then ends up becoming the kind of head of Punjab. And in 1801, he becomes the king of Lahore, king of Punjab. In 1799, he's taken over Lahore, and then he's crowned king of Punjab in 1801. So that's the context of where he fits in. So a summary: He's a Sevadar of the Pant. Okay, he's a Nitnami the advancing. He's not just some kind of warrior only. Okay, he's one of the Panjipyari. Okay, he's a brave warrior, leads by example. He's also a, a leader that can unify many groups of people. He wasn't a divisive leader, um, and he grows the Pant through Parchar. It's not just by how we think nowadays, let's have more kids and grow the Panth that way. Yeah? He's thinking about growing through Parchar. Okay? Um, he can, he can, he's very good at organization. He can also delegate power to other people as well. He's not somebody who just keeps it all to himself. You know, he organizes different groups. Um, 
And he's in training the next generation of leaders. He's not just keeping the power for himself, hoping that you know, when he dies, who cares, I'm going to die. But he's actually training the next generation and is able to step down. He recognizes his time to move on and pass it on. So these are the kind of people that you know, inspired our Pant. So inspirational and massive thing for us. Even now, the legacy lives on. Buddha, Dalta, Nadal are around right now. Okay? That's all Nawal Kapoor Singh. So. All right, just, I, know, I can't do enough Ustaf Nawal Kapoor Singh. Probably done a very bad job, so my apologies for that. Um, I wish, I wish. We could, you know, be there at that time and see what these things did, but obviously we can't. But it's important to know the history, you know. Please look at the Khabar Singh Ji. Wah, Guruji ka Khalsa, Wah, Guruji ki Fatih.